My name is Elena Gonzalez Ruiz. I'm from Oaxaca, Mexico. I'm the artist in residence for this place. Uh, there's 7,000 people in my village and there's 4,000 weavers. So this is a co-op that you see right here. It's all from a co-op that we work with 50 families. Everything is 100% sheep wool, 100% natural dyes. The main pigments what we use is cochinilla. You can see them right here on the nopal cactus. They live on the cactus for three months to absorb the juice and then they need to be brushed down and they get dry on the sun so they become like this. When we're ready to use it to dye with, we grind them up, make them to a powder like this. From this, we can get 60 different colors, but we do have 21 different local plants to do lots of mixing and combinations. Right here, I can show you how we get three different colors using just water. At home, we need to have a big pot of boiling water, and this is the first cause what you get. To balance the pH, we use lime juice because it's very important to balance the pH because if you don't balance the pH, the cows won't stay. They're going to run. And now the pH being balancing, you can change color uh, into another color. I'm going to use the limestone because limestone has alkali in it, so it's good for darker color. So you can get purple. right there so and uh, there's another color like this back right here it has the blue these two shades of blue right here indigo it's a plant being fermented for six months I can show you how so this is the plant of indigo the name of the plant it's anil so this is how they do the fermenting right here they're going to live in a huge tank like this. They're going to cover with water. And I don't know what else do they cover with because we don't do any of the processing. But after, they're going to leave it here for six months. After the six months, they're going to start just collect, collect the paste, drain it, compress it, and becomes like this. So the way what we do the indigo, it's set it in warm water like this but we need to grind it, make them to a really fine powder. Like this right here, it's really fine. And to dissolve, to dissolve the paste, we need to use rubbing alcohol. And you have a, like a pot with warm water and this water needs to have baking soda when you add the paste into the water with the baking soda, re the reaction gets yellow instead of blue. And you put the yarn in, move it under the water. If you want a really light color like this, this is one minute. You know, put it in, move it under the water, bring it out for oxygen and start to go. The first color is what you see. It's yellow, green, and blue. So this is the first color is what you got five, five minutes, and this is... If you want it darker like this, this is 30 minutes. And the yellow comes from tarragon. Right here. This is tarragon. This is the colors what you get from tarragon. And also pomegranate skin, it gives you the same color right here. This is pomegranate skin that you give you the same color. And this is the Spanish moss right here. So this is the cause what we get from Spanish moss. And this is the Wisache bean. We don't have any black, black sheep, but when we want really black, so this is the Wisache beans. It's not edible. We just use it for black, but we need to soak this for six months. Then boil it and you get the black. And this is the walnut shell for beige. Also, you need to soak it for six months to get the colors because if I, I want to pour this right away and put the yarn in, you won't get any color. And the first, first thing what we do, it's more than the yarn before we do the dye. This is alum. 
So the, the reason why we do that is to clean the wall, leave it really pure, so when we do the dye, it absorbs the colors really nicely.